This video is about the horror trailer conventions. So the first one I looked at was The Forest, which came out this year. I looked at the marketing of the film that was in the trailer and the title and credits that were used in the trailer too. So the end of the trailer, a search bar was shown typing in Suicide Forest and the search results include Suicide Forest, True Story Movie, Hashtag the forest is real. This is advertising it on Twitter and Google and it is seen enough um, the audience may start to believe it. I believe the movie is true because it says it's based on a um, true story. It enhances the realness of the movie and the realness of this um, suicide forest. And the um, titles and credits used in the trailer, they are adamant that um, the audience, whoever's watching it, needs to stay on the path as it's repeated three times in the trailer. It's used the block uh, font. It's instructing you, um, and it goes from small text to big text. So the second film I looked at was Carrie from 2013. I was looking at series that featured in the trailer and would obviously be portrayed in the movie as well. So. The first theory I saw was Bath, Bath's Enigma Code. Um, obviously, the whole way through the trailer, um, the audience has sort of pieced bits of the, the puzzle together and um, try and figure out what's going to happen in the film. So, in Carrie, you're trying to piece... Because um, it kind of gives a little bit away, and if you know the book and the original... Um, then obviously you're going to know um, this trailer as well and this film. Um, but if you're a first time watcher of the trailer, then you're there trying to piece each bit together and figure out what's happening and everything else. Um, the second theory I saw was Willerism slash um, Molly's Mail Gaze because they linked together. Um, so the shower scene, uh, she's in nude. Um, and enjoying the shower. So this is uh, portrays Mulvey's male gaze because the audience is being forced to um, look um, on as a male. And voyeurism because we are watching um, something from as an outsider, watching someone else do this Um, another theory I saw definitely was Levi Strauss's binary opposition. You could see, um, obviously, the obvious one is evil and good because Carrie is supposed to be evil and the rest of them are supposed to be good. However, there's also the girl and her boyfriend who poured the pig's blood on her. They could also be classed as evil because they were mean to her and the blonde girl who tries to stop that could be classed as good. Um, there's also the um, writing opposites of dark and light. So another, there's three more theories I saw. There's Barbara uh, Creed's monstrous feminine because obviously Carrie has supernatural powers and she's supposed to be the um, villain of this film. Their final girl, um, the girl from the blonde one who got knocked out of the of the prom in the in the trailer didn't um, obviously she survives because she didn't get she wasn't in the prom hall to die and there's also Chodder off the equilibrium theory where um, at the beginning everything seems calm before she gets her powers and then obviously the seventh when she gets her powers in the film people die so. That's, um, uh, could be a resolution to the, um, uh, uh, perhaps they're trying to solve the equilibrium. Um, and then she gets her powers, they get become stronger, and it becomes the norm of the trailer. So you're like, okay, well, she's got powers, that's normal now. Um, and then in the trailer, we don't know what happens next. So the last part of the equilibrium, the, the, um, getting it back, 
isn't actually in the trailer because obviously that would ruin the line. So the third trailer I, I watched was Blair Witch um, or the Blair Witch Project, uh, the remake which came out this year. I focused here on the filming and editing of the trailer. Um, in the trailer the shot changed a lot. Um, it was pretty much a, a, a shot change every almost like one second or two seconds. Um, there are a wide range of shots and as the shots increase, so they start to change a lot more, the um, music starts to increase the speed and intensity. I think um, overall there are about 67 shots in the trailer. Um, the transition between each shot um, are sharp, so they're like jump cuts. Um, and the camera treatment is often shaky and handheld because it's meant to be a found footage film. Um, and it's also very subjective and objective. So the camera is often treated how the audience is, is meant to, it's almost as if the audience is in the scene in some parts where like you're seeing what a character would see or on the other hand it, there are other shots where you're meant to watch the scene as an outsider um there are a lot of low angles to show fear um and a lot of eye level shots as well watched so the fourth trailer i watched was ouija origin of evil and that came out this year um for this trailer i was focusing on the use of horror trailer conventions so the conventions that were in this trailer were the title does not appear until the end they showcase the stars of the film some visual images stay on the screen for only just enough time for our mind to realize what we are seeing unusual angles are often used to show events or characters action is interspersed with credits on screen and the trailer builds to a climax where it ends so the first one title does not appear until the end is a very common feature amongst all genre all genres all trailers from all genres um because you don't want you want your audience to watch the trailer um like the content and then find out what film it is instead of finding out what film it is and then searching it on google um they showcase the stars of the film so they will mainly just put the main characters in side characters won't really be in it that much unless they are important in the plot line um or probably a big name so like if samuel jackson was in it he would probably be in the trailer um some visual images stay on screen for only just enough time for our mind to realize what we are seeing so you might see something like a dark shadow and then it will cut to another shot for just long enough so you'll just see the dark shadow on the screen for just long enough for your mind to realize oh my god that's a dark shadow and then it will cut to another scene unusual angles are often used to show events of characters this is very common in horror films because odd angles show like a distortion slash unknown feeling for the audience um, action is interspersed with credits on the screen, again, common amongst all trailers. You want to, um, for example, in the first one we saw there were um, titles and in this one there are um, in between the supernatural elements there will be credits on the screen about the film name or what the film is about or what the film contains. And lastly, the trailer builds your climax where it ends. Again, very common amongst all trailers. A lot of time it will build up a plot line and then just end leaving the audience with a sense of, oh my god, what's going to happen? I need to watch that. 